if we take the idea at face value that the body can only absorb 20 grams of protein per meal, it is decidedly false. It is very clear that the body can easily absorb more than 20 grams of protein per meal. What people mean is they're talking about protein synthesis. So let's get our terms straight here. When protein goes into your body, it first has to be digested. Digestion basically means it's broken down into pieces that the body can absorb into the body. So absorption requires the nutrients that you consumed going into the body and generally being available in the bloodstream. After absorption, the body can metabolize these nutrients. So you want your body to not just digest and absorb the nutrients, but also metabolize the protein. And that means that the body can use it for, for example, muscle protein synthesis in your muscles, which makes them bigger and therefore makes you more muscular and stronger. So it's definitely not the case that there's any limit on digestibility or absorbability of protein. You would have to consume absolutely ludicrous amounts before that will ever become an issue. The body's energy harvest is exceedingly efficient and the body has no problems getting all the protein as well as all the calories from the food that you eat. So absorption is really not an issue. What is an issue is muscle protein synthesis. And here, there is a lot of truth behind this idea that after 20 grams of protein, at least high quality protein, such as whey protein or dairy protein in general, there is very little additive effect anymore of going higher up in protein. As you can see in the graph here, after 20 grams of protein per meal, there is essentially no further stimulation of muscle protein synthesis, especially not at rest. Why is this? It's because of what researchers call the muscle full effect. As you can see in the graph here, if you just keep pumping in amino acids into the blood, then at some point your body's not going to respond to that anymore. The body will be refractory to it. And the mechanism there is essentially that you cannot eat your way to the Mr. Olympia. So the body will only stimulate a certain amount of muscle protein synthesis that it needs because muscle protein synthesis is a very energy intensive process. The body doesn't just want to go around and building a lot of muscle. In nature, of course, the body has evolutionarily adapted to only building muscle when it's absolutely necessary because otherwise it would waste a lot of calories and energy on that. If you don't need the muscle mass, that is not adaptive. So the body will only build muscle to the extent that you stimulate that muscle growth, usually with strength training. So you could say that in terms of muscle growth uh, being a glass and how much you fill up that glass, strength training basically determines the size of the glass and nutrition determines how much of that glass you are filling. In other words, researchers will say that nutrition is permissive for muscle growth, whereas strength training is the thing that really stimulates the muscle growth. So it is true that for in most situations, after 20 grams of high quality protein, there is no additional further effect on muscle protein synthesis. However, there are a few very important caveats. First, this refers mostly to research at rest or research in the post-exercise period where people trained with relatively low training volumes or only exercised a single body part. When we look at research in which people do a substantial training volume, especially of full body training, we see that the muscle full effect increases, so the ceiling of muscle growth increases up to about 40 grams of high quality protein. That's a pretty big difference, of course, it's about double. Uh, that means that after your workouts, you can utilize significantly more protein. Nevertheless, 40 grams of protein or about 0.6 gram per kilogram body weight is still not that much and it's mostly the first meal after the workout in which this occurs. However, there is another potentiator of muscle protein synthesis and anabolic signaling and that's fasting. After longer periods of fasting, we see that anabolic signaling can reach higher levels than before. This makes sense in terms of the body having a greater demand for muscle protein synthesis when it didn't have a lot of muscle protein synthesis in a period before. Whereas if you keep flooding it with amino acids, then you'll see that the body has the muscle full effect and it becomes refractory to further stimulation with amino acids. So again, makes perfect sense from an evolutionary point of view. If you were starving in the period before and you now get access to a lot of protein, then the body will use that protein to repair all the muscle and the lean body mass that was lost. A higher level of protein that the body will use to restore and build new lean body mass and therefore uh, stimulate muscle protein synthesis.